Hello, welcome back to Energy Lab. I'm again joined by a guest host, but before I introduce my guest host, I'll ask you to subscribe and like the video. Well, especially, I guess, if you like it. With this in mind, I would like to introduce my guest host, Sarah. Uh, maybe if you just introduce yourself briefly. Hi, Stefan. Uh, so I'm a project manager at Innerware. I joined Innerware about four years ago and I was part of the team who was responsible for the project we're going to talk about today. Excellent. So today um, we'll talk about a grid-connected project or an on-grid project. Um, there haven't been that many videos about, uh, in general, on uh, Energy Lab so far, but we've spoken about uh, Nurai Island, uh, which was an off-grid project, uh, and we've seen an HSE video where we covered mm -hmm. a project under construction for a grid-connected client. Um, let's just briefly, or if you can just briefly uh, elaborate, what's the difference between a grid-connected uh, and not grid-connected or an on-grid client versus an off-grid client? So today, this is an on-grid client or grid-connected client. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? All right. So I, I saw in one of your recent videos, you spoke about Nurai Island, as you mentioned already. And uh, that client did not have uh, the accessibility to connect their system to the grid uh, electricity provider, in that case, Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. We specify these clients as off-grid. So basically, they don't have grid connection. The client we will be talking about today is connected to the uh, Diwa grid. Uh, Dubai Electricity and Water Authority, and we specify these clients as on grid. Great. Um, if if they are connected to the electricity grid, why would they want solar on top of that? What's the benefit? So lately, uh, solar was able to achieve uh, lower tariffs than the electricity grid. That means they are able to save uh, money because they are cutting their uh, electricity consumption from the grid provider as well as the main uh, purpose is becoming more sustainable and cutting their CO2 emissions. Okay, so basically with, with the falling cost of uh, solar panels, the cost of producing electricity with solar is, is now cheaper than the grid price and as you mentioned, a cost benefit but also an environmental yes. one. Great. Exactly, yes. In Dubai, Diwa has announced regulations to support and regulate this grid connected solar solution which is part of Shams Dubai mm -hmm. and I, I believe that was introduced in uh, 2015 so something like five years ago. Yes. Um, can you just explain a little bit about these regulations and why they're useful? Yes, sure. So as you mentioned Shams Dubai initiative is the name of the initiative and it was launched to support the ambitious vision of uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum in making Dubai one of the smartest cities in the world. Um, the initiative is basically works as a regularity framework where only certified contractors, suppliers, equipment, whether it is solar module or cables or uh, inverters are being installed and implemented for the client. So it assures the client that whatever is being installed is as per the high standards set already by the regulator here, Diwa. And the most important thing of that initiative from my point of view, it allows net metering. Okay, um, what is net metering? So net metering basically, um, maybe we should throw an example to make it sure. much more clearer. So let's, let's say, or let's assume that you have a commercial or industrial uh, client, yeah. and that client works six days per week. So one day per week, his consumption is close to zero. Mm -hmm. Ideally, if he wants to take the whole benefits of the solar system or the energy being produced by the solar system, he would need to invest in a battery system to store the excess energy mm -hmm. on that particular day. That's when DIWA would come into the picture and net metering would become valuable because it would work as your ultra efficient battery, free of cost, whatever you are producing or whatever excess energy you're producing would be credited for you as kilowatt hours and you can use it later on. Great, great. So yeah, as you said, so basically the net metering functions like a free battery for the end customer, Correct. right? And if you wouldn't have that, you would lose uh, one day out of seven days uh, and, and basically that increased the cost of the whole system because you're still paying for the same uh, system, it, but yes. you, you don't get the benefit out of it. Or, or you might install a system that would cover their consumption in summer, but then in winter where there is no AC, 
okay. all of that excess energy yeah. would also be uh, wasted. Yeah, and exactly. Not want so that. because in the summer, typically most of our customers here have much higher loads uh, versus the, to the winter. Yes. Correct. Very yeah. good. Um, excellent. Um, so should we go to the client now? Sure. Let's excellent. go. Yeah. Let's go. So now we are here at the client site. Um, you can see it in, in the back. Um, it's 10.30 in the morning, summertime, 40 plus degrees. The pleasures of working in the Middle East here in the summer. Sure. Um, Sarah, can you briefly introduce the client and what they do? Sure. So Swiss Watch Group is a leading distributor of uh, leather goods, writing instruments, eyewear, timepieces, and many other things to the Middle East and Africa. The UAE established company, it was established in 1996. Uh, they have a rich portfolio of uh, renowned luxury and fashion brands. Uh, they are very professional clients and they made it very clear from the beginning that their goal is to cut their CO2 emissions as well as reduce their electricity bills, which basically means saving money. Excellent, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go on to the rooftop. Let's go. <laughs> great, let's go. <laughs> Before you climb the ladder, make sure you are attached with this scroll wrap. It must be attached always in your safety harness. So in case if you fall, it can save you from okay. falling down. You climb up and you feel tired halfway, you can use the resting spots so you can gather some strength and continue going. Okay, great. Wow, now we are on top of the roof. Uh, I'm still a little bit out of breath. Same here. <laughs> it's getting hotter. Huh? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the KPIs of this project. Yeah, yeah. Welcome uh, to the roof of Swiss Watch, uh, guys. So this project is around a little bit over half a megawatt. Uh, precisely, it's 534 kilowatt peak with uh, 420 kilowatt AC capacity installed. We have behind this 1,424 modules installed, and we used in this project. Um, monocrystalline uh, cells uh, from Canadian Solar CS3U uh, with output of 375 watt peak. We have seven units of SunGrow 60 KTL and in terms of environmental benefits of this project Stefan they are saving uh, approximately 435 uh, uh, tons of CO2 and that's also equivalent uh, to planting 34,000 seeds every year. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. And and what we can see here is just half basically of the total plant, right? It goes on the other side of yes. the roof. It yeah, it continues. has two orientations. This is the first orientation and then the one just across there, the uh, second orientation. Great. Yeah. What I've also noticed is um, here you have again cleaning robots and in one of our previous uh, videos we're talking about cleaning robots, but these re cleaning robots look a little bit different to the other ones. Yeah, true. That's, uh, that's an intra-array robot and uh, there are many reasons of using robots, especially for such clients like Swiss Watch. They would like to minimize human interaction on the roof because we have right below us offices and people would like to concentrate. So the steps and the climbing and all of these are causing noises. So we have installed here robots. The main difference between this robot and the previous robot in your videos is that the previous robots are well suited for long uh, rows of modules. However, here at Swiss Watch Group, the uh, row or the span is way less. Yeah. And therefore we chose to have intra-array robots, which basically means it shifts from one row to another, leading to minimizing the cost and minimizing the number of equipment you put on the roof. Great, great, great. Um, Every project is unique, right? Um, yes. And the challenges associated with each project are unique as well. What were some of the challenges here on this project? Yeah, I mean, every project, as you mentioned, is unique. The main and the first uh, challenge you would face, uh, usually in the sales uh, process, is the client expectations. Uh, the clients would like to have net zero consumption and that's binded by how much area available for installing the solar. and that's usually the first thing they would got shocked or, and surprised about. Uh, also, they would like to have the best of the best equipment, which comes with a cost 
and it really depends on the client how much he's willing to uh, put in terms of, uh, of financials. The other main uh, challenge is the equipment installed. So you, if you would summarize the equipment in any on-grid project, there are, there are main five components, the solar module, mounting structure, inverters, cables, and uh, uh, electrical switch gear. Now, modules and mounting structure, it's easy, it's on the roof, but when it comes to inverter and switch gear location, it plays a, a very critical role in the pricing of the project because it also affects your cable routing and how you're going to lay the cable. Uh, switch gear location is also very challenging with the, uh, the set of regulation we have set by DIWA because you need to maintain specific spacing between the equipment inverters. Ideally, you want them in an AC uh, closed room, but mm. uh, that's not possible in many cases. Other than roof access <laughs> is a problem, but for Swiss watch, we had to install scaffolding to make sure that the uh, workers are not tired. Also, load distribution on the roof when you bring the material up to the roof, you need to make sure that it's structurally correct when you are distributing the material. Those are the main points I would, I would say. Excellent. And I mean, we covered already that um, in, the, in the first part of this video is that uh, all the suppliers, uh, the, 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 the equipment is Diva Shams certified as well as the design. So everything that has been installed here needs prior approval by, by Diva as part of the Dubai Shams initiative and as you correctly mentioned also in the first part this provides obviously an immense level of confidence to end customers the clients uh, and that's why it's um, valuable to have the shams to buy totally, initiative yeah. yeah yeah sarah thank you so much for your time and, no and showing us and educating us about this project thanks for having me <laughs> thank you uh, i guess uh, let's get to a shaded and air-conditioned environment again uh, if you enjoyed the video please subscribe and uh, like the video. Uh, thank yeah. you. Thanks. Bye.